Welcome to this week's Money Metals Podcast, helping gold and silver investors during these treacherous times. Now, here's this week's market wrap with commentary and analysis from the company voted 2015's Precious Metals Dealer of the Year in the U.S., Money Metals Exchange. Welcome to this week's Market Wrap Podcast. I'm Mike Leeson. Coming up, we'll hear an encore performance of one of the most explosive interviews we did this past year. Stay tuned for my conversation this past July with Gaddis Chris Powell. Chris pulled no punches on the important topic of government manipulation in the metals markets, and he has a dire warning for executives of mining companies if they continue to sit back and ignore the problem. You simply don't want to miss this replay of our interview with Chris Powell coming up a little bit later in the podcast. Also, in the special Christmas Eve edition of the program, we'll take a look at new developments in one of the most extraordinary inflationary episodes of modern times. But first, let's get to this week's market action. Investors are enjoying a Santa Claus rally with stocks up, crude oil up, and precious metals mostly up as well. Gold prices currently come in at $1,075 an ounce, showing a modest weekly gain of 0.8%. Meanwhile, silver looks higher this week by 1.5%, to trade at $14.38. The precious metals appear well positioned for a more significant rally after getting extremely oversold heading into the Fed's rate hike decision. Both gold and silver have since advanced, but the bulls still have more work to do to get prices to break out above their months-long trading ranges. Tis the season for giving, but when Congress gets into the giving spirit, it sticks you, the taxpayer, with the bill. Last week, Republican leaders gave President Obama the gift of a $1.1 trillion spending bill that funded every plank of his agenda with no strings attached. Democrats couldn't contain their glee of their victories they achieved with the Republicans supposedly in charge of both chambers. Democrat House Leader Nancy Pelosi said of her Republican counterparts, quote, they gave away the store. Also in a joyful mood was the Democrats next in line to be Senate Minority Leader Charles Schumer. Senator Schumer was nearly in disbelief as to how great a deal the Republican leader served up to Democrats. He gloated that the ominous bill, which jacks up spending by $80 billion, funds government programs at higher levels than, quote, even the president requested. The only concession Republicans got from Democrats was a lifting of the ban of U.S. crude oil exports. In exchange for that, Democrats got everything they wanted and more. President Obama called the spending bill a good win for his party. By contrast, it hasn't been a good week for Republican Speaker Paul Ryan, who is getting an earful from his constituents, from conservative commentators and from conservatives in Congress who feel betrayed. The Ryan leadership machine completely shut out fiscal reformers to make sure they couldn't add any riders that would deprive Democrats of anything they wanted. The bill proceeded through secret backroom negotiations, and Republicans got outnegotiated big time. Establishment Republicans didn't want to be accused of being Grinches for insisting on spending restraint. So Paul Ryan and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell rounded up enough Republicans to vote for what was essentially a Democrat bill. In any event, the expressway to more debt and eventual fiscal ruin seems to have no exits. The official national debt of $19 trillion is just the tip of the iceberg. The government faces more than $200 trillion in unfunded liabilities. That's a lot of dollars that will have to be created that don't currently exist. And that's why despite the recent wave of falling commodity prices, a massive inflation could loom in the years ahead. In a worst-case scenario, we could see hyperinflation. One of the most recent examples of hyperinflation was the case of Zimbabwe. It got so bad a few years ago that the government started printing currency notes in denominations of $1 trillion, $10 trillion, and $100 trillion. That's what can happen when a nation attempts to print its way out of a financial hole. By 2009, the Zimbabwe government basically admitted that the Zimbabwe dollar was worthless and began allowing South African rand and U.S. dollars to circulate. Now the troubled country is also welcoming the Chinese yuan. On Wednesday, the government of Zimbabwe announced that it would accept the yuan as an official currency. 
The Chinese yuan was recently added to the special drawing rights currency basket by the International Monetary Fund. Its inclusion in Zimbabwean commerce is meant to attract Chinese tourists and investors. It will also allow Zimbabwe to pay back loans to China in yuan. Another motivation is geostrategic. The Zimbabwe regime headed by Marxist Robert Mugabe can use the yuan to get around U.S. and international sanctions. The Mugabe model of ratcheting up socialism, rapacious land grabs, and runaway money printing serves as a warning to all countries that go down that road. The U.S. may never get to the point of hyperinflation, but even just a rise in inflation back to the 1970s levels could bring about calamities in financial markets and severe financial pain to people who are unprepared. If Zimbabwe serves as a warning, then our silver versus Zimbabwe dollar display serves as a powerful illustration of the fundamental differences between reckless fiat money and honest hard money. The silver versus Zimbabwe dollar display features an actual $10 trillion face value Zimbabwe note, along with a genuine silver American eagle containing one troy ounce of 0.999 fine silver. It is available for just $79.95 from Money Metals Exchange and perfectly depicts the point of what can happen when a government loses control of its paper currency. Well, now, for more on one of the biggest stories among the precious metals community in 2015, the manipulation that's taking place in the gold and silver markets, let's get right to this encore performance from July. It is my privilege now to welcome in Chris Powell, Secretary Treasurer at the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, also known as GATA. Chris is a longtime journalist and a hard money advocate. And through his tireless efforts at GATA, he is working to expose the manipulation of the gold and silver markets. Through GATA's works over the years, some important revelations have come to light, which should concern everyone. It's good to have you back with us, Chris. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Oh, I'm delighted to be here, Mike. Well, I know you've only got a little bit of time here, so I'll keep it short and I'll, I'll jump right into it. Uh, so on Sunday night, we had yet another attack on the gold market right as it was holding above a critical price support zone. Someone sold several billions of dollars in gold futures contracts during the wee hours of the night right before the Chinese trading day began. It happened during a, a time of low liquidity like it normally does, and it, it took the price down over $40 in a matter of a few seconds, halting trading twice uh, for a brief period even. Uh, what are we to make of all this, Chris? Well, it's you know pretty depressing for monetary metals investors. On the other hand, uh, I suppose you could see it in a way as, as, as progress for the cause because it was uh, the most brazen, obvious, clumsy attack yet, uh, and it has prompted a few people to uh, acknowledge that it was uh, a, a manipulation. The, the problem is the, the people who are acknowledging that it was a manipulation cannot quite bring themselves to question whether central banks were involved in it, but it was... It was so obvious that even people who are not uh, aligned with the uh, manipulation school are acknowledging that somebody was very, you know, heavily trying to, to drive the price down. So now I think we've advanced to the point where most market observers will acknowledge that somebody uh, is tampering with the gold market, that it's not a free market, and the question now is, is really only who's doing it. And uh, Perhaps in another few hundred years, uh, financial journalism will uh, try to put a critical question uh, to central banks about their own surreptitious trading in the gold, gold market. It certainly seems manipulative because obviously a legitimate seller would, would try to sell when there is actual liquidity in the market as to maximize the sale price. And we've seen this sort of thing a number of times going back years now. So it is quite obvious what's what's happening. And, and there don't seem to be major investigations in, into these price raids, and it just keeps happening. I know you've got to be beating your head against a wall. Why don't we see government authorities or large investors crying foul? Well, because these raids, I'm sure, are essentially instigated or underwritten by, if not actually implemented by, by governments. What some people don't realize, Mike, is that it is explicitly authorized by federal law uh, here in the United States for the U.S. government 
uh, acting through the Exchange Stabilization Fund and the Federal Reserve to rig any market, not only in the United States, but uh, but in the world. Got a brought a lawsuit against this in U.S. District Court in Boston back in 2001. I attended the only hearing on this lawsuit, and uh, an assistant U.S. attorney uh, representing the Fed and the Treasury Department called the court uh, in support of a motion for summary judgment dismissal. That the, the, the lawsuit had to be dismissed because the uh, the complaint of market rigging had no remedy at law because the assistant U.S. attorney said the United States government claimed the power to do all the market rigging that our lawsuit uh, accused it of doing. And our own subsequent research into the Gold Reserve Act of 1934, as amended in the 1970s, tended to confirm that assertion. The nice thing about that hearing was that the U.S. government, through this assistant U.S. attorney, got up and claimed the power to rig every market uh, in the world. That's what the statute says. Um, you know, we're just having a very hard time getting the mainstream financial press uh, to look at the statute and to put questions about surreptitious trading by central banks to the to the central banks themselves. But this this most recent attack was so brazen and really clumsy. Uh, I know people think it was so clever because of its timing and the. The, the timing of it with the lack of liquidity and everything like that. But they gave themselves away, and I think that is a sign of desperation, that they no longer can attack gold and keep the price down in subtle ways. They have to do this this really obvious ham-handed stuff uh, that even gets some pretty dense market observers uh, suspicious. Now, I know for 10 years, got a chairman, Bill Murphy, and I have been observing this market, and practically every day for 10 years we've been saying they couldn't get any more obvious, and the next day they do get more obvious. Um, but this one really, I think, took the cake. There's a Reuters story today that uh, quotes a couple of uh, gold traders as, as acknowledging that this was ma- manipulation, and they're just trying to you know, wonder out loud who's behind it. Now, if Reuters can acknowledge at last that uh, this attack on the gold market was uh, was a market rigging attack well we're that much closer to uh, pinning responsibility on the on the the main parties involved which are which are western central banks now i don't know how much longer this is going to take us but i i think it's, it's progress in so far as uh, even the the densest observers of the market uh, are acknowledging its manipulation unfortunately mining industry executives themselves are still quiet about this, and the World Gold Council, as, as usual, has nothing to say, but uh, at least the scales are starting to fall from the eyes of a few people, precisely because these attacks are becoming more and more brazen and clumsy. That leads me right into my next question here. I know you've been encouraging mining companies to band together and hold back some of their production from markets at these suppressed prices. I know First Majestic has been uh, sitting on some of their silver production in the past year. But I know it's it's tough because if miners don't sell metal, they may not have the cash flow needed to, to keep the lights on. Uh, what is your sense of what the mining industry is thinking? Uh, the mining industry, I think, uh, Mike, is thinking that it should just die quietly and obediently. I think its value is likely to fall to zero, and its executives will have nothing to say for themselves or, or their companies uh, all the way to zero. Uh, I think the uh, the industry is worthless, and uh, it's worthless not so much because of the attack on the monetary metals by central banks. It's worthless because its own shareholders and executives uh, are content uh, to die quietly. If the industry will not stand up for itself, I have no idea why anyone would want to invest in it. What about the institutions in the metals markets, such as the World Gold Council and Silver Users Association? I guess you commented on that a moment ago, but to expand on that, where are they coming from on all of this? Well, I, I can only speculate about their, their motives, Mike. I, I I think I can fairly say that uh, they are useless to uh, to investors in the monetary metals. Uh, I, I find it laughable that something like the Sunday night, Monday morning attack on gold could happen. And, you know, here we are uh, five days later, and the World Gold Council has, has had nothing to say about it. When, when even some 
gold traders it can be quoted by Reuters and uh, Financial Times and other people as saying, gee, this was an attack, this was a manipulation. But the World Gold Council has nothing to say. Um, I have long suspected that the World Gold Council is uh, really a, uh, a mechanism of, uh, of price suppression, that it was... Uh, it operates itself, I think, to make sure that there never is a World Gold Council in in lowercase W G and, and C. I think it it exists mainly to make sure that there is no uh, worldwide voice for gold investors and, and gold mining companies because it's it's absolutely useless in the uh, context of the attack on the industry. But it will have to answer for itself if anybody wants to uh, try to get answers out of them. I wish the financial press would call up the World Gold Council today and, and ask it, uh, hey, what did you think about what happened Sunday night and Monday morning? Uh, are you uh, in the least suspicious about it? Uh, I think you'll just get stony silence out of them, and I think that's really their worth to the industry. We'll definitely be interesting to see how much longer uh, people are going to put up with it. I definitely uh, sympathize with, with everything you're saying. It is quite frustrating. Well, Excellent stuff, Chris, even though it can be a little bit of a bleak picture here. Uh, thanks for being so willing to speak the truth about what's going on. I, I know it must be a frustrating venture at times, uh, but there's uh, a lot of people out there in the precious metals community, ourselves included, who, who do appreciate the work uh, that you're doing at GATA there. Uh, now, before we let you go, uh, can you give our listeners more info on, on how they can learn more about this and then follow GATA's work? Oh, sure, Mike. Uh, again, well, thanks for letting me harangue you uh, about this. Uh, GATA is the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. Our Internet site is gata.org. We're a uh, nonprofit uh, educational and civil rights organization. Uh, we've got uh, tax-exempt status from the uh, U.S. Internal Revenue Service. Uh, we are very grateful for any donations uh, that uh, can be made to us. You can donate by credit card over our internet site or uh, you can get our address off the internet site and send us an ordinary check though I'm very reluctant <laughs> to pitch people for donations these days now that our industry has been just uh, so devastated I, I'm not sure that anybody's got any money to, to give us anymore but we will try to uh, keep flying the flag and pleading the case for free, free and transparent markets and limited and accountable government and particularly for free trading gold and silver as uh, defenders of economic liberty through the world. And we do put out some uh, dispatches to our email list every day. And if people would like to get on our list, uh, they can just go to gata.org and sign up for our uh, dispatches in the right-hand column of our Internet site. Well, it's definitely a, a noble endeavor, Chris, and uh, we appreciate it very much. Thanks again to Chris Powell of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. Again, the website is gata.org. We urge everyone to check out the great content available there that Chris and the guys put out on a regular basis. And before we close, we should reiterate and note that despite what seems like an awfully bleak picture for precious metals investors recently, eventually market forces will win out. If low prices continue to devastate the mining industry, production will fall and shortages will crop up. This forces prices to rise. So if you believe gold and silver have a bright future in the long term, today's suppressed prices are really a gift. It gives you more time to accumulate more ounces of what appear to be bargain prices. Well, I hope you enjoyed a replay of that interview, one we felt was important enough to share with our loyal audience a second time. Be sure to check back next week for our final weekly Market Wrap podcast of 2015. Until then, this has been Mike Leeson. Thanks for listening. And from all of us here at Money Metals Exchange, we hope you and your family have a very Merry Christmas. And I'll talk to you next week for our special New Year's Eve podcast. Thank you for joining us for this week's Money Metals podcast. Be sure to come back next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast through iTunes. For answers to all of your questions, or to discreetly and securely buy or sell gold or silver coins, bars, and rounds, call 1-800-800-1865 or visit www.moneymetals.com. Our knowledgeable and no-pressure specialists are standing by between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. 
Or you can lock in your order online 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, visit us at www.moneymetals.com or call 1-800-800-1865. 